Okay, can you see me now, guys? As we're coming back in at the moment where Luna... The cliffhanger? Luna doesn't lose the Regida. Luna doesn't lose the Regida. Uh, yeah, that's where we come in. Guys, realized it last second. Okay, one foot second so that I can switch over so that you don't get spoiled about the length of the game. And Regida moves back up north. Ruggiori coming around. And M2A1 hitting the Ruggiori. Artillery landing on top here. Guardia DP being pinned down. Maybe Ujor holding the line. Off map kills the T34. The ABU Jor now is the biggest boy around, but it doesn't have much infantry support uh, to really push the enemy out of there. And T3485s and SU-152s are more and more present on the map, and that's not a great prospect here. ABU Jor getting sniped by the T3485. Stuck trying to hold the line here, but this is looking rather rough here for Luna in the south. T3485 could to take the fight with Stuck, though that's a bit risky on this range. Uh, you don't really want to risk that, usually. But T-345 gets the first shot. Stuck. Can it retaliate? No, it bounces, so the T-345 will win this fight. Or not. Okay, misses there. Gets penetrated now by the Stuck. And it's slightly better rate of fire on the Stuck, but it needed too long to aim, so it, the third shot is still first for the uh, T-345. Um, so it will win that fight. The rate of fire difference with Stoke having 7 rate of fire and the T-345 only having 6 is the main reason why you don't want to take these fights on shorter ranges. Whilst Luna now tries to go for overwhelming air. HS-129 coming in. The AA still relatively far in the rear, so the HS-129 most likely will get through here. Nice. There's also no smoke this time to be dropped around the T-345, so the kill should come. Uh, yeah, good kill there. 2-2 two -two also Taking the wholly wrong time to run into this neighborhood. Yeah, you couldn't have chosen the worst time to come into this neighborhood. BF 109 and IAR gang really bullied that one out of the skies. It, and put it to the ground, telling it, no, you can't fly. You were way too fat for that. And yeah, the 2 2 dropped off out of the skies there. BF 109 is now trying to bully. Even more units here. Even trying to bully AA. They really got bold after that one, didn't they? And now are loose onto the enemy side. Wow, did they took that one lane too hard. And they actually it actually works out. Come on, somebody has to get somebody has to show these bullies what's going on. Where are the Yak 3s on this? Okay, big boy AA is coming in now to show them what's who's boss in the end. But, oh boy, yeah, these guys really have become bullies. After that one easy victory, oh no. What have, have you done to them, Stardeck? What have you done? Meanwhile, in the north, M30 with radio being just the easy upgrade on this version. Um, yeah, as it actually has radio, and that makes this artillery piece actually pretty useful. Uh, it tries to pin down the 85mm. AA still flying around. Good smoke usage on the SU-152 here. And so it can't get clustered this time around. 37mm pushing back the enemy planes a bit here. IAR is being forced back whilst mortars in the north trying to hit more targets here. Saperi so under fire. Uh, there's Rojori tried to move forward as well. 1311 here for Static still, but. If the airplay of Luna can go on like this, that obviously wouldn't stay uh, won't stay this way. Another fighter card for Luna. So we saw BF-109 E7s, IAR 80s, and now we also see BF-109 G4 R6. So three fighter cards. That's interesting. Usually, most players nowadays play with one fighter card. So uh, sometimes you use two. Three is wholly uncommon, but Luna is a wild horse and uses wild decks, so... That just fits into the playstyle. 2-2 though will escape the BF-109 this time. Won't follow its brother to the grave. Won't end up as a fireball just yet at least. Whilst the Stuck 3G tries to hold the ground in the south. And since the uh, T-345 down here died. 
the SC-152s can't quite deal with it, so um, it can defend itself now. Question is, can Luna get into this zone again? Ooh, this might be a way in there. I don't know, this off-map might not be an off-map after all. It might be a, just a cluster HE bomber by now, as that's what it's called in for. As it might have used up all its off-map usage already, but yeah, something that you forget often about, uh, that people often forget about this plane. This plane is not just an off-map plane, as it's a bomber as well. And it gets killed rid of the Sys-3 over here before AA can push it back. As the 25mm was too far off. Oh! It still had an off-map usage as well, so it might get double kills here. As it calls in an off-map charge onto the hill as well. Wow, okay, that off-map plane working heavy overtime here for Luna. Well, it's the Northern situation, still a stalemate. Uh, but Luna is getting more and more infantry in here. And in the straight-out infantry fight, Luna's Rogioris and uh, Kalaris should for sure win these fights. Clyde Grandier is also helpful there. So, this is interesting. M30. Trying to get rid of the SG-43 here. T-3045 and SG-152 though. Really powerful vehicles still on the battlefield. Gardia goes down. As the BF-109 E7 flies above. 60mm mortar. Coming in for some smoke usage now. Trying to hold the line here. 85mm. Sitting on the hill, but Stoke 3s are rolling forward. Black Rangers will easily get on this hill. Pioneer Kalari there sitting as well. Well, it's down in the south. Sniperi and Tankos hold the line. So, 12 12 is what it's on now. Stardek got a solid advantage in the first 20 minutes. Question is can Luna now push back with the air advantage? A8. On the other side by now, looking relatively solid again. Um, so, Luna will have to use a lot of artillery to get rid of that. Or really overwhelming air. And maybe in the north, it still doesn't look that amazing. bf 109 E7 here though. Still, most likely will go down. Ah, AA not quite getting on target there. And J88 is coming for this 85mm. P uh, the 37mm here not on the perfect spot should move up over here so it can fire the whole northern part of town as well as it has a bit low uh, angle of fire thanks to the forest right be uh, beside it but this J88 still might drop dead doesn't quite get the 85mm and it flew directly over a lot of two star veterans CAA yes J88 goes down Luna mismarkering that one should have called it off via the northern route instead of the southern route to get back to base and pace with a pretty expensive bomber there which should make Stardek a bit happy but in the north Stoke versus T-34 won't be a good fight for the T-34 here so he has to be careful to not lose that there still trying to hold on to this hill and has a 1311 once more 2-2 coming around as well still no AA on the battlefield here on the side of Luna. More Vegidas though coming forward. And the 1410 is continuously ticking here for Stardek. Another J88 coming in onto the battlefield. As this these bombs will most likely hit here. Superi and PTRS going down. Stuck 3G. Will be able to get off the, rid of the Guardia. Only the T-34 remaining. And that Luna should be able to deal with as well. Luna Zing, one more fighter here though. BF-109 dropping two AA fire as another 25mm AA has come up. At the same time though, the center here is getting captured by Luna. As the infantry fights, as I said, going in favor of the Romanians. And the Stuck gets the kill through the T-3485. As T-3485 was not able to increase the distance quite enough to get out of range there. And oh, the M30 now also landing the hit onto the 85mm. A couple of really important kills there in a row lately. Meanwhile, Stuck now increasing onto the T-3476 over here as well. 
as that should be dealt with by with the Stuk or the Pioneer Canary with its Panzer Faust, a uh, Panzer Shrek. That could be an option as well. Southern section though, still in the hands of Stardeck. Still having control over two flags here, pushing hard, still having the big boy tanks here. So Luna will struggle to get rid of these. Another Regida has come in. Second Regida on the way here. But the SU-152s and T-345s, as long as AA can protect them, should still reign supreme over the open steps down here. So Luna, if Luna wants to get a flag advantage, has to grab it in the north most likely. First flag here has been grabbed though. Stuck trying to move forward as well. T-34-76 coming in for a flank. Does bounce though and the Stuck gets the kill. The Saperi next target here. And that will not survive for much longer either. As it is really really close to the Stuck 3G here. And with the next EG shell that should be it. Yeah, goes down. Guardia might get overwhelmed here as well. And this is not looking great. As the AB Whore here also could deal... Grave damage with killing off another important AA piece. As Sardek just was around, about to get a solid AA net up in the north again with a 37 and a 25mm. But the 25mm going down, the 37mm could be in danger of getting killed off by the Stuck as well. So the north looking really desperate here nowadays for Sardek. But if Sardek can win the south or at least hold on to this 12 12, that would still be fine in the long run. So Luna needs to deal even more damage. And the M30s try to go for that now. Firing once across the map here, trying to hit the tanks and the AA on this hill. Not too, too successful just yet, though. That's the Rogiori's get pinned down over here. More Rogiori coming in. SG-43 trying to hold the line. That's the Clyde Cranius moving against the Gallia DP here. Stock 3G. On the hill as well. The IADP will get pinned down. Most likely get killed off as well. Yeah. There they drop. 2-2. Two, two. On the way. SG-43 will pin it down. No AA still on the side of Luna. Completely playing AA-less. At first Bofors 40mm. Now entering the battlefield. As the fighters are scrambled as well, but these are slow fighters. And the 2 2 only getting to the middle of the map should be able to escape here in the cover of the 37mm. If it's not. Oh, that circle is. Should have just flown straight. Ah, that was a ballsy circle. Might still work out here in the end as the 37mm is now working on the IAR. Speed of 109 already pushed back, but 2 2 took some unnecessary damage there, I would say. As the BF109 would have pinned down and the IR would have never ca caught the TU2 there in my eyes, but Sardek still gets it out alive. And Bombing Run got through. Meanwhile, T34 85 trying to help out from the rear. Well, it's the SIS 3 gun pushes back the Stuk. Gets one penetration, but bounces the second time, so not able to get the kill there. And as the 12 12 remains. 25 minutes played. And Sardek has a good advantage in points. But if Luna can overwhelm the AA or get enough good infantry fights online, protected by Regidas, this still might change. Regida versus SU-152. SU-152 getting the perfect bullseye, but so does the Regida, so they trade out evenly. Which still is a good trade for Stardex. Stardex just needs to hold on. Every Regida killed is one less Regida that can bother his t 3485s and su 152s Five twos, and you have a lot of SU-152 cards in that deck. Way more than you have Regida cards in uh, the 5th Cavalry. So, really, really good kill there still for Stardeck. But, might allow a bit more infantry freedom here for the moment for Luna. Though the M30 can do relatively well as direct fire support gun as well. Let's well try to hit the Rosarioris over here. Artillery being called in for the north. As it's still a 12-12 here. But Luna really needs to figure out a way of how to grab a flag here. Insanely close game between these two. As the 
M30s firing to the north. Sis 3 gun on the fire. Most likely will get killed off by these hit uh, shells eventually. Though still no radio on the front line. Uh, with a radio unit on the front line, these M30s could be even more successful for Luna. As the Sis 3 is getting pinned down. Tanker and Nikki's coming in from the rear. SU 76 trying to hit the front line over here. As the Pioneer Assault will defeat the Guardias. Brigida pushing back the Guardia DP over here as well. Getting some nice hits. Stoke 3G slowly moving forward. That's the Beretta. Is trying to move forward as well. Good movement here with the Rogioris. That should be finally enough to get control over this flag. If the 37mm is not able to pin them down in time. Well, that might happen. They should break line of sight there. Just move that slight bit further forward as the SG-43 and 37mm are pinning them down. Yeah, okay. Good movement there from Luna now. Gets rid of one more eight, uh, MG here as well. And now has the 1311. Which, with 20 minutes remaining... Should be just about enough to get the victory. So now it's once more on Stardex. On Stardex to get back to the 12-12. But Luna is setting up a good defense of this river crossing here. With Stooks and, and the tank guns on the hill. Another Stook here helping out. D3485 trying to come around to try to deal with it. Can get fire onto the Stook on 2000 meter range where the Stook can't retaliate. Gets the kill. Important kill there. That might allow Stardeck to get back in here, but infantry needed, and both sides are really low on reinforcement points now. The AA into the, uh, the artillery into the south also got rid of one of the AA pieces here right now. If the second one falls, the whole position in the south will be come really hard to hold for Stardeck, so this AA can't fall. And as these are two Star Veteran C37mm, even though this should be a C-Face card, there shouldn't be any left of these, so uh, this is problematic. And yeah, with all the Yak 3s dead as well, defending against the airstorm that is about to come here will be a really tough to uh, task. And maybe an impossible one. J88 coming in for the Guardia DP over here. All the planes starting to pin down units. SU-152 has no unit to smoke at this time. No AA to help it out either. So the HS129 will get the finish. As the IAR is going for the 37mm and nearly gets it as well. As the B109 is coming in for the final blow. And that kills it off. And that means no AA down here anymore. And that is really, really grim news now for Star Trek. 1410 for Luna. With a 59. This the fate of static basically w would be sealed and yeah i don't quite see the forces right now to push this back against the airstorm that can the luna can unleash onto static now both in the south and the north only the center now covered by four the four remaining AA pieces these are still pretty good but luna coming around with another j88 not dropping all the bombs okay interesting bomb micro there and only dropping one of the he bombs there now coming around to drop the, the remaining three. Really, really good micro there. Not something we see every day. As it gets the SG-43 killed off now. That's an interesting one. I, I think I've never seen someone doing it in that way. I mean, we have seen it with some rockets and so on in the past, but seldom with bombs. Interesting play there from Luna. Cool thing for sure. As the Regida... Is firing onto the T-34 over here. And that T-34 shouldn't be long for the world. No. Regida with its 15 rounds per minute. An insane AT gun for its price. So well played there by Lu uh, Luna. And with that, the 1410 here is pretty much secure. As the Regida now will push back the T-345. Artillery on static side not good enough to beat this. The M30 is now trying to open fire onto the AA pieces here as well. Desperately moved away by Stardeck, but if even more AA pieces fall, obviously the air of Luna will just even have more of a free reign here. And it seems like this matchup might end in a draw. As we are closing in on the 50 minute mark. But it's still 18 minutes to go. And 
Luna is already on a 1410. And still has the long game units here on the board with the artillery, with the air. Well, it's the defenses against those kind of units are really, really crumbling on Stardex end. Unless Luna runs out of AT, and I don't see that happening. Brigida is still in a good amount of positions, and even then, the HS129 would make it hard for Stardex to push again. As the amount of tanks are not that high on the side of Stardex either. As we see a supply truck here going down. And that means that this 85mm still doesn't have any HE shells, I think. So that's a big loss there as well for Static. As even if this 85mm survives the artillery, it won't be able to fire back. You have 109 coming in here to bully the infantry further. And Luna really closing in on recapturing the flag down here. Which would get Luna pretty close to a 40, 10, uh, 59. Though at least Static. Able to recapture some flags in the north, for now. 12-12 though, is what is necessary. And achieving that could happen for a while here though. Huh? Every minute the 12-12 would take right now would be amazing for Static. But it, a lot of flags on the edge right now and I feel like the momentum is still more on Luna's than on Static's side. Because you have another HS129 trying to come for a T3045, T3045. Tries to get away from it. AA still out of ammo as the supply truck blew up to the artillery. And the 25mm not good enough to stop it. So the cluster will fall. And the cluster will get the kill. Stoke will survive over here. Is out of HE shells though. So not the most amazing damage dealer. Well, so IAR is trying to fly for the SG-43 here in the center. Though that is a bit ballsy. That shouldn't be done yet. Luna... Realizing that in time as well, but spotting the 37mm at the same time. So that 37mm will have to run for life now. Static is quick on the reaction there, but it still might not good, be good enough. As the M30s are aiming up. And the color Razi helping out in the infantry fights around here. As Luna is pushing onto this flag as well. And it seems like this game is closing out slowly as well really interesting game really strong opener from luna to counterplay uh, static pushing the south static not expecting the air start from luna not having the aa in place just in time so luna getting a nice victory with those airplanes in the beginning and stopping static's heavy push for the south that was so successful against me showing why luna is a quite a bit better player than me. As Peter S over here gets bullied. Brigida trying to hold the line. He will try to get, kill off the VG bot. As the front line here of Stardeck is completely crumbling. And only a couple of big tanks are around, but those who won't do the job. The momentum all on the side of Luna now. No big tanks around anymore, no air, lackluster AA, no artillery. And the infantry was worse than Luna's as well, so yeah, everything is in favor of Luna here. Dadek still showing his prowess by capturing an 11-13, really knowing how to go for flags, showing that once more, but Luna too good to be beaten this time around. And yeah, the advantage this time even bigger for sure in KD. Than it was in the first game, and this time it should be good enough to allow for a victory here. Static fighting for dear life, but we are really getting close to 59 now, and Static still has to hold on for 13 more minutes whilst the hit point bar is equalizing rapidly here. As the M30s right to hit the SG43 over here, should be successful on that. And with, if that dies, the front line already might collapse. Second SG-43 tries to hold it. But at least as soon as these units are moving forward again, this should fall. 1410. And the 59 is really, really close now for Luna. Sniper Perry trying to hold the line in the south. More units here coming in for Static. But 1410. 14 and out uh, from Static's perspective is not good enough. 11.13 even once more. 
but never quite 1212 again. As the Rogiori move forward over here, should be able to deal with the SG-43, especially as the Kalarazi help out as well. Sniping off the SG-43 relatively quickly here, and pinning them down in a second. And with that, the front line will falter. We're back to a 1410. Northern flank, going relatively well for uh, Stardic again, but not good enough to push back onto the hill. While it's in the south, we see the Guardias losing out in the forest fights here against the Rogioris as well. And with that, we are at a 59 now. 59 will end the game in 11 minutes, but the game might not go that long, as the quick take rate here is really going to equalize this quickly now. So, really good game here from Luna in this second one, showing good understanding of the game once more, showing why he is so scary to play against by the amount of um, shenanigans that he threw at Static. With Static having on paper the stronger force on the front line, units with the T3485s and the SU 152 for this map, but Luna really playing well around it. Vegeta's actually not as key in killing stuff as expected. They still were absolutely vital for zoning. Um, like, Static knew he couldn't push easily because Vegeta's could be around every corner and they kill off your heavy tanks relatively rapidly, so they were still absolutely important, but the killing was down to other units, and it was good enough in the end to topple Stardek in game number two. Luna equalizing the score in the end, so this group stays really, really exciting with this first 1-1 one -one in this, and we'll see how the other two of this group will fare in this week with uh, uh, Colonel Koenig and Pure Tanner. But for now, it's 2-2 two -two between these two. As we have to start the group stage. And we will go into another match of um, SD League Season 9 Division 2 now. As we will have a look into Homer versus UU next. So don't run away, guys. We'll be back with you in a second. But we first I'm gonna take a short break so I can set up everything and then I see you in a second. Also, thanks for the follow. So here we go again. The second series of the day. As we have Homer versus Yu Yu. Homer, veteran of the last three seasons. Yu Yu, aka Peach on the other side. New to the league. But for sure not new to the SD circle because, yes, it's his first tournament. That's why UU starts in Division 2. But the reason why UU isn't starting in any lower is because UU is ranked place number one. Or number two at the moment if Gonzo took it back. But for sure, in the top two or top three of the rank ladder. So, a tough opponent for sure. Let's see how this goes here. As we see, 7th Mechanized coming in on the right side. Homer on the other side, playing 26 Panzer on Slutsk East. So, that should be an interesting matchup. Looking forward to it. Before we jump into this, though, let's have a look onto the bracket where they are in. As their other opponents are no easy ones either. Green HD coming back for Division 2 once more. And Fari Drommel. Uh, Veteran of a lot of seasons by now as well. The General of the Foxes. Uh, doing a really, really good job over there. And, yep. Yeah, this should be a really tough group. So every point you can take is a valued one. And let's see how this goes. If you want to support these players even more. And you feel like they are going to be the best this season. You might want to take them in your Fantasy League team. Get yourself your Fantasy League team set up uh, by messaging green or s with your picks or me and we will set you up here already good couple of guys have come in here um, more of them will be added later as i got a couple of messages as well so let's see who has the best uh, picks for league season numero nine and who 
can topple Reef, if Reef can be toppled this season. And then, yeah, once more shout out to Metarino, where you can add money to the prize pool by just clicking this claim code button up there, guys. It's totally easy. You just click on the link down below or in the chat right now. Click on that claim code button. 25 cents. Add it to the prize pool. Completely for free, guys. Completely for free. You don't pay anything, but one of the Steel Division players who deserved it through hard fights and victories will get it paid out in the end. Real money that they can invest into a kebab or a new PC. Let's see. Let's make this level more esports, guys. Come on. Let's go. At least let's use the free money. And big shout out to Witch Doctor for we investing some of their own money into this as well. Obviously, every contribution is highly welcome. And yep, yeah, let's move on into the game. Also, we have a new YouTube channel, SD League Uncut, where we upload all where I upload all the re, uh, casts that I do on this channel that don't make it to the main channel. All of them will be on SD League Uncut. So um, yeah, all the games should be archived. So if you remember me uh, now, from now on casting a game and you want to see it again, a couple of days later, you should be able to find it on YouTube. Uh, as there is a two day period where they can't be posted. But after that, they should always one by one come up there. Um, already the first couple have been uploaded and ready to go over the next couple of days. So, yeah. And every follow there is highly welcome. As if we can preach the 1000 follower there, that would be quite helpful so that we can monetize those as well. And yeah, with that said, let's focus on this game. Sellout section is over. And let's focus on this really, really great matchup. Uh, two pretty mid tier divisions. 7th mechanized, got a nice buff now that the SU-122s uh, are cheaper, really good guns there. On the other side, the Fails Panther coming out, Homer a fan of these kind of units, the Fails Panther A, with a FAMO support for the open field here. In the north, coming in with some Ersatztruppen and some MG-42s, a couple of outclairs, so relatively light force there, relatively slow force as well, but on the other side we see a lot of these fast jeeps, 95 kmh of speed, with Saperi PPS H's even, as uh, Peach really wants to rush up here, uh, artillerists in a Dushka WC-52 as well, and Homer gives yourself to uh, UU here as well. So Perry PPSH is coming in for these buildings here. So UU prepping a lot of ground. Lots more some more Saperi PPSH just trying to get in here. They will get sniped though. And taken out. That's the SU122 is trying to indirectly fire onto the SU uh, MG42. Won't be able to achieve it though. As it went out one building earlier. And the Panther A is coming scarily close to the SU-122, which can't fire back on 2000 meter range with its heat shell. Um, its heat only has 1500 meter, so it looks scarier than it is here in the open field. Its 2000 meter range H -E, uh, e is still great, but the AP shell can't fly that far. And we have a second Panther coming out. Homer really investing hard into this, but has to be careful to not get overwhelmed here, because the forces that Homer has put up here are heavily outnumbered by the forces on Peach's side. Matilda 2 coming in. KV-1 joining there as well. Slow but steady tanks. And a good amount of Superiors, Red Redgas, SG-43s, M42s all around there. So, yeah, Homer absolutely on the defense there. And let's see what can be done with these Panthers here. If they can achieve a big breakthrough over here. And the Superior PPSH hold the building. And the Grandiers holding the south. Whilst up in the north, a good amount of Stoßtruppen, Beretta, and Panzer Grandiers will try to hold the line here for Homer. More T 34 76 is coming in. Strelke SVTs rolling forward as well. Trying to get next to the Superior PPSHs. Um, MG 42 locking down onto the town as well. Well, it's the 1311 is on. Panther A moving slowly forward over the open field. 
And currently no real opposition on the other side, but they also are still quite far away from any real flags. So yeah, there's still a good amount of ground to cover. And the issue with Panthers is this number here. Like the frontal armor is decent, but they are easily sideshotted by any kind of AT that can hit them. So even something like the M42 here is really scary for them when it gets side shots off. So Panthers always need to have a group of um, units around them that controls the area around them, that spots for them. Uh, otherwise they easily get flanked and killed off. So that's why they are not the most amazing tanks to push. Really more of a glorified tank destroyer often than actually a assault tank. Meanwhile, KV-1 here will most likely get into the fight with some Panzer 3 Ls. They're coming around the corner now, but there's an SU-76 uh, and an M42 behind it as well. So the Panzer 3s may be a bit in here over their head. One of them will go down. They get two penetrations with their APCR shells onto the KV-1, but no kill. And one of them does fall. Panzer 3 Ls in general, really, really good tanks though for their price. As their APCR shell has really great penetration and the AP shell still is pretty decent. Can easily trade against medium tanks and against light tanks, they're really efficient. As Homer is bringing in another Panther. This is... Really not the place for a Panther in the first place. And also the front line might need something else here. That's a wild investment in my eyes. Stoke M42 here trying to kill off the T-34. Doesn't succeed though. Bit too long range there. And that fight in the north looks quite rough now for Homer. As UU is putting up a lot of frontline units here. P2 now coming in for the Grenadier on the hill as well. As they try to dodge this. Rocky SVT coming in as well. Trying to get the kill there. P2 gets the bombing run through though. And Squandias will get hit. And the Matilda, the SU-76 and the KV-1 easily out uh, uh, beat the Panzer 3L if it comes to a direct fight there. So Homer most likely will get pushed out of here. Or at least pushed back. So the Panther and the Famos in the south need to achieve something. But so far... Not really successful in that regard. Famo now trying to push back the P2 at least, as the Bucker Wolf is trying to chase it down. ZSU M15 most likely will be good enough to pin down the Bucker Wolf though before it can catch up with the P2. ZSU opening up fire now, and the Bucker Wolf will be forced back, not able to drop its bombs either. So another investment here of Homer that doesn't pay off at all. And that is looking rather grim for the north. 1410 is on. That. So far, not a good game here for the blue player. Still far from out. And if these Panthers can achieve something big, that obviously would bring the game back relatively quickly. But a lot of ground has to be covered for that. Before we can talk about this. Saperi PPSHs and artillerists under fire. Krilla gets the Saperi PPSH, but that's not an expensive unit. That loss you for sure can take. But the Fucker Wolf at least gets a nice run through in the north. And more Panzer 3Ls and Desert Strippen come in. But the second Panzer 3L on the hill died as well. Matilda, KV-1 and SU-76 still alive. So the armored forces here on the hill still really, really scary. Uh, Panther trying to find some connections here, but UU is dodging them relatively well. So does Panther. Might be in a tough spot as well, where it could get side-shotted from the hill or from the town, depending on where it rotates. You really have to be careful with Panthers, and they don't really excel in town fights. Like, the side-shot risk there is just way too high. Meanwhile, we have a Panther dropping down dead over here. The SU-122 died as well, but... That's absolutely worth getting the kill onto a panther here. Especially as these panthers, as I said, need to do some work, basically. With the north being under such heavy pressure, and Peach is getting in an ISU 122S. That ISU 122S moving forward. Panther A trying to shoot into the south. And I once more realize I really dislike when people change the name too often. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Because... More Sistries coming in from the rear. Strelke SVT will get onto the top here as well. Panther. The SU-76 bounce with the first shot, bounce with the second shot, so the Panther should get a kill here. But that still needs to do a lot of more work to really fully pay off here. And the 1410 is real. I see you also can one shot the Panther A if it penetrates, and it has the accuracy to do so, and the AP for sure. So the ISU 122S here, quite scary, especially if it can get upweighted even one level higher. The uh, leader next to it would really ensure that it is the Panther killer. So Panthers need two penetrations. ISU obviously has a lot lower rate of fire, so that can happen. And if the first shot of the ISU misses, the Panther has a chance of winning that fight. But mm, if it hits with the first shot, it's the end of the Panther directly. So, um, yeah, bit of a scary situation here for sure for Homer as the ISU loses its mate, but is unscathed there from the Krilla shot. Second Panther now around. ISU moving forward. Will get a shot onto the Famo. Famo not penetrating, but the ISU does miss here. And now the Famo actually gets the penetration. Uh, Yuyu not moving back the ISU this time. As and now gets shot upon by a lot of units. That was. That ISU should have moved back after the first shot. As it most likely will die here now? No. Okay. Wow, that was quite lucky. The Panthers missed a lot, and those are two star veterans Panthers. But, yeah, ISU will get out, and we'll have another shot once more later on. Hazard Stubun coming in here. P2 coming out on the skies. Whilst the ammo is still falling back, and that might work out. Artillery of the F-22s helping out from the side as well. P2... Coming in on top of the Famo. But Fuckerwolf tries to hunt it down this time. But the Famo might be dead here. Yes, Famo does die to this, so that's good. That might allow for a lot more P2 bombing runs on this. The Famo instantly needs to be replaced here, basically. Matilda falls to the Panthers and the Grilla. As Homer is securing a 12 12. Meanwhile, in the north, the Panther on the hill did die. So, yeah, as I said, Panthers, this is not the terrain for them. It's burning down over here. And Matilda and KV1S still alive. Panther D trying to move forward here. Not quite getting into a super dangerous spot just yet. ISU is sharking around here once more. Two Panthers still around. So the ISU still needs to be really careful. As the next P2 bomber though is on the way. And if that can stun down these Panthers, they are in a world of trouble. It's like feeling coming around for the north. Two P2s, yeah, they should be able to achieve this. And then the ISU can roll forward. Grilla already going down. ISU already could move in now. Would force the Panther Ace to decide between engaging and dodging the bombs. Uh, ISU now moving up. Though the Panthers now are out of range, but won't get the kill. But Krilla kill still is good. P2s get out, will be able to reload. Panthers did take some damage here as well. So this is not looking uh, so amazing for Homer in the south. And the north is looking quite desperate, to be honest. New Panther has come around, but all the tanks around it are dead. On the other side, we still have some KV-1s, we still have some Matildas, we still have some anti-tank guns all around. And the infantry is just outnumbering Homer's infantry by a lot and outclassing it as well. Strelke SVTs are great CQC infantry, or uh, mid-range infantry rather, as the SVT is a really good rifle and you get nine of them on a 20-point unit, so really, really strong unit there. As Panther D's right to hold the front line here. Hey, hey. might be able to force back the BF-109. That's the Panther A. Hey. Duo here tries to move in in the south. Got rid of the ISU at least. So that's something. As an SU-152 comes onto the battlefield. We are coming back to a 12-12. Uh, 
with the flag captures in the south. But you you already um, took a bit of Homer's points here, and this northern section looks rather scary. By the way, both sides playing Vanguard. Something that I totally forgot to mention at the beginning. Uh, yeah, I remembered. Uh, yeah. So Vanguard versus Vanguard. Interesting matchup there in the points as well. As the BF109 G8 flies over everything. F22 smoking up itself now. Not 100% sure what that is for. But I guess it's just because the F22 is... At least one of them is out of ammo. <clears throat> and... You're not quite going for the flag here just yet. That's a Perry's moving in for the Azad Strip and Kill. That already might get the flag over here. And the Panther D is still in a really rough spot here. If that gets flanked, that's all tanks gone here. And then you're down to four infantry squadrons. So North is really, really in trouble here for Homer. If this Panther D falls, everything here will collapse like a card house. P2 coming in for the bombing run. Panther D will take some damage, most likely. And not fully get pinned down, but uh, it will st be stressed out, so it will be less accurate. And it nearly gets pinned down here as well. So the KB1s and Matildas could maybe overrun it as well. Whilst two Panthers in the south still can move forward here. We are on B phase. Um, they're still alive. Famo finally catches up with them. But Feeling tried to come around here as well to protect them further. So that is nice. But the question is. How can Omer hold on in the north? And I don't think there is a good answer there. Because this setup here looks pretty solid. Fucker Wolf coming around with the flank. Set you a bit out of position. Uh, line of sight blocked by the forest a bit. So it came in with the fire pretty late. But the Fucker Wolf still gets pushed back before it gets its bombing run through. So Set is still working out there. What's two P2s coming for more harm on and you use side panther d here under heavy fire kv1 trying to help out with it as well panther d might get a penetration there no does miss as the next p2 gets the swarming around onto the panther grenadier panther d goes down to the first p2 panther grenadiers go down to the next one and with that the front line in the north most likely is about to collapse as we are now up to a 14 10 22s Smoking off the south. As P2 does now fall back. MG42 holding the line against the Strelke SVTs. Should be able to pin them down. Yeah, able to pin them down. So that's good there. Whilst the Strelke SVTs over here slowly move forward as well. Wolf Ramen tried to get the SIS. It set us to M15s. But they need to get the kill there. And I think Yuyu moved that quickly enough. That's the Swalky SVT. Try to get the air that's tripping. T-34-76 moving forward. 59 now for Yu Yu. SU-152 getting the air that's tripping over here. 14-10 happening. F-22s. Trying to get some smoke into the south. And whilst... Big push tries to come through the open here. Another ISU-152 uh, 122 has been assembled though. The Panthers have to be careful once more. It's a good group here. Uh, but if the farm move gets pinned down, that could be dangerous. And it's two ISU-122s now to deal with them. What's in the north? The <laughs> next panther has arrived. That's panther number three up here in the north. Two of its brethren already have fallen without achieving much. Let's see if the third one is any different. But I feel like its mission is even harder than it, the, its predecessors once because there's just even more now around here to deal with it. So that might be quite rough to successfully push back here now 
this game is really on the brink of being fully lost here for Homer. Some victories need to be won over here. The Panther printer goes brutal though, as the next Panther A comes in. Like, we saw more Panthers here than other people's bring in light tanks in their decks. Like, the amount of Panthers is quite insane. As these two over here moving forward get the SU-152. No anti-tank on the sides to deal with them just yet. Um, but SG-43 and M-42 at least try to deal with the Panzer Grenadiers over here. Trying to stop them from getting onto the flag. Panther shoots down here though. Once another ISU moves up onto the field. 52P trying to hit the Panther A. Once it's a parry. Hold the ground here as well. Fucker Wolf. Coming in for the Strelki. Fucker Wolf F8. Being pushed back. Once the Panzergrenadiers hold the flag over here. They try to fire into this direction. 59 for UU now. As the game continues. Is SMG 42 under fire from the hill as well now. Matildas don't have HE shells, so they can't really help out with this. But these infantry units won't achieve too too much either. As the Wolf Ramen comes in over here versus the Stalky SVT. The 34 76 will lose out against the Panther here. Doesn't stand a chance there. So Homer might get another flag back here for a while with the two Panthers, but pushing any significant amount of space with two Panthers here will be a really tough task. And I'm not sure if that's possible around here, as the P2s once more drop their bombs around here, and that might be the end of this Panther A. Famo for sure goes down. Panther A heavily pinned down. ISU coming around. Doesn't get penetrated. This time with two star urgency. Does bounce! Oh wow, this is a bit unfortunate there for UU, but... Homer needs to react, does react relatively slowly as the next ISU comes around. That one gets one kill, that next one falls as well, and that is the end for the South here, basically. And now only the two Panthers are remaining basically as major frontline units for Homer here in the whole game. Once the other side is filled with a lot of stuff. P2s coming in further as well, not really necessary here as their target already has been dealt with. Next Farmo trying to come around to set up some AA. But I'm not too sure that will be successful, as the 13-11 does continue. P2 being pushed back, F-22s trying to shoot more onto this burning pile of rubber, of rubbish. Once the F-22s continue there, SG-43 moving forward as well. Most Valky coming in for the south, Pentagon here holding the flag for now here, but the 13-11 is on. Homer already down more than half the points. 20 minute market has been reached, so with that, both sides down to really low income as well. The P2 is still all there and still able to bully m even more units on the ground here. As the airs are get shot upon now. So this should allow UU to move even further. Wow, okay, the P2 not hitting there. More SG 43 moving in. ISU. Trying to hit the Truppen. That's another P2. Comes in for the north with the Panzer Grenadier. We have 109. With only two 30mm. <laughs> Not good enough to push that back at all. No AA around here. So the P2 is really unanswered throughout the whole game here. Famos tried to do something about it, but a single Famo doesn't push back a P2 before it drops its bombs. And especially not when two of them are around. So, yeah, another Panzer Grenadier being killed off over here. Leaves the Panther A here without any cover. If the Rajvetkas would find a good way to move forward, they could even get the kill there on top of it. And the 1410 does continue, but this game is basically over. Two Famos now in the center. But, yeah, Homer surrenders now. GG, VP. Game 1 goes to UU. And really good start into League Season 9 here for our new Chinese player. So, well played.
And Homer needs to find another solution for problems than Panthers. Another solution needs to be found there. So with that said, let's see if Homer can find that solution that is not big cats in game number two. As we go in there in a second. Number two, we are in with a wild one. As we are on Trooper once more. And we are in here with Balanced versus Weak for Victory. And we are in here with Rhyma Rapana, Homer's favorite division, versus Yu Yu bringing an army of Crayova onto this battlefield. And I have little clue why you would do that with either of these divisions, really, because they both lack the 2000 meter HE. I mean, yeah, Homer has used this division on this map before. And yeah, he had speed me with it, but that was me on a bad day. <laughs> and it's still Rama Rapana, not the most amazing river map division. I guess it has solid artillery. Something that Amir Kurva doesn't have either though. So Wild picks here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> we will see. As these two go for each other once more here. Uh, yeah, Yu Yu coming in with Ahmia Kraeva, Homer coming in with Rhyma Rapana, and once more before we go in, shout out to Matarino where you can support this tournament by just clicking this little button up there, adding free money to the prize pool. Fantasy League signups are open till Friday, and the thirteenth, so. Get around and no, the uh, Friday the 4th, sorry. Um, yeah, and get your Fantasy League team up as well. And then check out our ST League Uncut channel where you can find all the upcoming, uh, all the tournament casts from now on out that are not making it to the main channels. All the tournament casts will make it to YouTube, uh, all major tournament casts. League 1 Steel Division League. Um, should all be there now. So, yeah. Check that out if you don't want to miss out. Or if you missed out a uh, cast of the last couple of days. Um, yeah, you will be able to find it there eventually. So, subscribe and check that out. Yeah, every subscription there helps a lot. Getting us closer to being able to monetize that channel as well. Which would be really, really great. If we can get there within the next three to four months. And yeah, let's see how this goes. As Homer on the left side is coming in, as I said, with the Finnish forces. A couple of T26Bs already on the battlefield. On the other side, we see a good amount of infantry in the south. We see a Kubus with the Piat. Five point Piat carrier. And KM Maxim coming around as well. Uh, let's see what they can achieve. Pack 50mm in here as well. Really, really wide matchup. Um, yeah, not quite sure <laughs> what to expect. Because I don't think we ever have seen these two divisions in the tournament facing each other. Let alone these two divisions on Krupa. And these two divisions on Krupa with this matchup uh, in income. For sure. Like This might not have ever happened before in the history of Steel Division. Like, not just in any tournament, this matchup might not have happened at all before in any Steel Division game whatsoever. Ranked, unranked, friends playing against each other. This matchup on this map might not have happened before. Ever. So, let's see how it goes. We are in for a wild one. Let's have some fun, guys. Who do you think is the favorite in chat? Uh, yeah. What do you think about this matchup? Which division would you rather pick out of these two? For a map like this. As I said, I wouldn't pick either if I would have any other choice, basically, like outside of Koruk, maybe. Uh, but <laughs> it's still a really interesting one. So I'm happy that these guys try to entertain us. And yep, for this game alone, you should press the Maturino button. Let's go on. And yep, this was what I expected. Homer loves to do the off-map shenanigans, the cheese with 
uh, the finish coming in here for the south with the gauntlet mark 2 to get a good off map hit onto the southern part of the map let's see how UU will react there as the transports are still driving and they need to stop they really need to stop now do we see a cancel order button here no they're going on so far the off maps landing really nicely for UU oh my god is UU just lucky here oh wow okay that off map did nothing and that was not down to you, you reacting at all it was just down to pretty bad RNG for now now they are forced to unload but not even taking damage let alone killing any transport like not a single transport was harmed in the making of this video right now <laughs> so what the hell happened here <laughs> that was really unfortunate for Homer as you, you just completely ignored it. Completely ballsy, r rushed in there through the off map and got rewarded for that uh, bravery, um, <laughs> some might call it. As the 12 12 in the center is still hold well. Planahame Bomber trying to come in here now. Two 20mm Swift 2 star veteran C on the other side. And that should be a close call. If it comes to killing this Planheim. Planheim, not the most resilient bomber, but at the same time, 20mm is not the best AA pieces. Two star veterans, he helps out a bit. Okay, no. Planheim will make it out. And a lot of infantry here for Homer coming in here. Double flamethrower units. And Sissy Cav with good amounts of Suomis trying to push through here. They might succeed in that. On the other side, we have double flamethrowers in the form of Sapergi as well. Nazi trying to help out over here. Sniperi, interesting units. Uh, 10 point single man sniper squadrons. Trying to pin down the leader on the other side of the river. What's the Sissy Calf push further here? 13 11 for our player in blue. As the Vecotin is out as well. 60 millimeter, uh, 20, 60.20 millimeter dual barrel. Really good AA piece. Really, really powerful. As UU brings out the first artillery pieces. Moye on the battlefield now as well. And Commander out from the get-go too. So we have about the luck over here. To be better at the AA part. And infantry with three severance down here. Also trying their best to pin down the sissy calf. Trying to kill them off. But Homer still holding the position pretty well in this forest. M1441 moving around as well. Partijani sitting here to deal with the sissy calf. Ojnazi moving forward as well. As the sissy calf is dropping down dead. But can Homer reinforce this bridge yet now? As there's a lot of reinforcements coming in. Off map plane should be able to come back in. Question is do you want to call it in where you already got. Planheim shot up badly by the 20 millimeters, but if you stay back here, you should be able to call in the off map and then get out before it gets killed. We'll see. There's more infantry is coming down here, so Homer wants to win in the south. But obviously, balance versus V for victory allows for a lot in game for sure. We might see the 50 minute mark in this one. As artillery is flying in. Mortar trying to kill the Partijani over here. Another 20mm coming up in the north. 75mm holding the bridge. 12-12 still on. And we have a 105mm Howitzer. Uh, FH-18. We don't see this gun often. But it's kind of the best that you get with AK. Uh, the reason why this thing is not amazing is that it has a really low rate of fire for such a small caliber. Um, if you get radio on target, it is somewhat decent. Um, so, yeah, trying to kill the Vecotin over here right now. Might succeed in it. With two direct hits. At least it got a bit cheaper. Um, went from 75 to 70 points, so... It is functional. But 
is for sure not an artillery you choose when you have any other real options. But you're lacking these in AK. You have a couple of small guns in AK, but when it comes to bigger artillery, that's what you go for. The Howitzer plus the artillery getting a nice kill on here, though. Whilst Peach now tries to go for the BAF, B in the rear as well. L2, KR, trying to get the gauntlet in disguise. I have no idea why that was called in at this moment. As it gets killed off there. L2KR trying to go for the BFB as well. TCOM on the fire. IL2KR trying to go for the kill down here. Second one hunting it down now as well. BAFB PCOM goes down. 75mm on the fire. Howitzer setting up fire as well. What's the Takam? Is coming in for the kill onto the 75mm down here in the south. Isle 2 is flying wildly. Trying to hunt it down. Vecotine pushing it back. Second Vecotine trying to get on target as well. As the U2 LNB is coming in over here. Gets shut down. Crashes into the ground. And we have a 12-12 situation. On the other side, we have LEFHs as well. Okay, so it's mediocre artillery versus mediocre artillery, the matchup. Uh, so we have three guns by now on the side of UU, though. And the victories in the south lately really make the position for Homer hard here. Losing your commander in a long game so early on is really, really tough. As commander's extra veterancy is really powerful, so that was quite a disaster down there. We have both IL 2 KRs getting out alive. As the T 62 moving forward as well. Sissy trying to snipe the Ocean Nazi. As these will try to get the flag over here, trying to get the tick onto Homer here. IL 2 KR coming in. Under heavy fire by the Vecotin though. And the Hawks get behind it. Hawks should be able to kill this off. And the Planheim comes in with a nice bombing run. Against the Ojnazi over here. Isle 2 KR goes down. Planheim. Did the Planheim just kill that with its front gun? No, it must. Did I just blink or did the Planheim's turret just kill the Isle 2? I mean, it has that double turret on top that can be moved forward as well, so... Yeah, might have done that, but the two 20mm struggle to kill the Planheim, as always. So that's really the issue of AK here. Killing off the enemy air. And the air, for sure, way to victory here for Homer if the enemy AA, the couple 20mm can be dealt with. Uh, then the next good AA only comes in C phase for uh, UU. And the fighters can be beaten by the fighters of Rima as well, though the fighters of Rima are not the most amazing either. Sissy holding against the Partizanis here. As um, the Partizani get pinned here. M14 trying to help out. We are still at a 12 12. Watch not see's got pushed back. The 105mm artillery. Trying to kill more targets over here. Vecotin moving away though. But something I think might have gotten killed there. Some, something. No, it's just the ground burning. 105 millimeters. Trying to kill it there. Schwat moving forward. Batijani coming in. People CKM on the hill for the recon. And the 105 millimeter. Is trying to hit the howitzers over here. Trying to get the kill there. Not quite able to achieve that though. It's the U2 LNB is coming in. The carry will be the target. Sissy hitting the Partijanis. U2 LNB is on the way to get some kills. 
East 26 getting killed off. Shavuat moving down to the south. That's her being around here. Lots of 152mm moves forward. Mortar trying to hit the Sapergy. And the off map could break this whole position. Map for sure. Really, really powerful. 105mm trying to counter battery against the 105. Let me turn on the other side now. Well, the Hawk flies in the north. Uh, two centimeter luck trying to get the kill there. Oh, it's here. coming in now. Well, it's down in the south. The Oshnazi might get overwhelmed by the Akari. So, yeah, that should be a win for the finish. 12 to all still on. T26 goes down in the center though, and if. This artillery goes down. Um, yeah, if you uh, can start to win the artillery fight, that would obviously be pretty rough as well. Though we have a big gun now out for our player in blue, the Schneider 155 mm really strong gun. Uh, if that hits your artillery and counter battery, your artillery is gone quite quickly. Meanwhile, the 105 mm as you can see, needs some good direct hits to do that job. Your carries and. Kaveri's coming in. But they might run into the howitzer fire here. That's why you never position artillery on road skids. Because if they get counter battery, that might have unforeseen casualties. Innocent bystanders might get harmed here. And yeah, that's why you never do this. First, your carry here already will be forced to unload it, I think, from the stress. Oh, no, the stress is just low enough that it doesn't. Uh, the next. One might get harmed instead. Ah, lucky with the RNG so far. Next shell landing far off. So, okay. Homer is lucky there. Not so fortunate on the front line, though. As the off map did pin down the units over here. Well, it's not too, too painful either. But the SMG go uh, the HMG goes down. And you, you might be able to cross the river here. So it won't be easy. L2KR coming in for the sissy. Vekatin trying to push it back. As the L2KR comes under heavy fire here. Gets pushed out. M1441 under fire by the BA10. Interesting fight. Should be a pretty close one. As both sides can penetrate each other relatively easily. But with the first penetration the BA-10 has the advantage of stress so gets the kill there in the end as it also has the better rate of fire hard apes thanks for the follow as we have an interesting find down here in the south Homer pressing for the 1311 smoke on the bridge trying to get the infantry across but the Hetzer the Schwat is holding it off yeah Panzer 38 with its MG and it's a couple of HE shells Doing its best to try to pin down the enemy before it can get anywhere. And that's really the problem of these divisions. Against tanks like this, you don't really have an option. You don't have the mid-range tank that can come around and help out against it. You need your air or your artillery to really deal with it. And this is not really given right now. And tank guns can't really get around here. Get a nice line of sight. There's no good tree lines to help out with this. So, yeah. The... Hetzer does its job, bullies the units back. Meanwhile, the 155mm though now going for some counter battery. The first flak already taken out here. So let's see how this goes. Yes, the 75mm AT gun is under fire now. Over here. We have some 155mm trying to kill it off. More shells being caught on top of it. Well, it's not see Nazi tried to cross the river. And another M42 trying to come in, trying to get into position where it can maybe kill this tank off. But there is infantry behind this as well. Nosh Nazi tried to get by these units as well here. Tried to get onto the Vecco team. He carry not in position to really stop this. It might... They might not quite have the line of sight here. Well, uh, no. They don't have the range anymore then. 
and 1311 now for our player in red as UU has pushed over the bridge and is pushing in here and a lot of casualties lately here on the side of Homer might allow for a breakthrough here even once in the center we see a flag captured as well and uh, Sissy's desperately tried to hold on here but the T2P and the MG42's opening fire quickly here Sniper Paris could join this fight as well but obviously they would be one shot for the Sissy so they would don't want to risk it meanwhile Plan Heem trying to come in once more with a nice bombing run here and I'm surprised that we don't see more air spam here as I feel like air spam is the easiest way to victory here in this matchup but Homer not doing that just yet instead a major infantry push is the pu uh, push of choice but there's Scroopy Storm over in here and they're holding the line really really well well positioned getting the TNT off killing off some infantry the other can't follow against those TNT units so um, the units here off Homer a bit stuck can't really bypass that easily well, it's the Planheim gets another bombing run through, though. And that gets the pin down. Okay, yeah. Airs, like the Planheim, are the way to victory. Vekotin coming around again. Meanwhile, in the south, though, Yuyu is getting more and more ground on the other side of the river. And the T26s have to be really careful of the Schwad. The M42 never made it to the front line either. But the carries at least stopped the Oshnazi from any annoying in the rear 105 millimeter and 155 millimeters trying to counter battery 105 millimeter off each of UU under fire but not dealt with just yet and in the north the infantry push off Homer gets some ground more your carries coming in here now let's see where they can go infantry fights can for sure go either way but in the somewhat closer fights I would say there is an advantage for sure for the Finnish ones l 2 Kardo coming around to try to bully the Maxims here and the Vekotin not in a good spot here when it comes to line of sight doesn't fire at all Hawk coming around going head on with the 20 millimeters of the l 2 Kardo um, J88 coming now in it's front gunner getting a couple of shots on through the l 2 kr and the two Vekotins able to finish the job 20 millimeters not quite able to kill off the Hawk as the J88 comes in with a nice bombing run here. So Homer might be able to break through in the north. Yeah, J88s and um, Planheims till the 20 minute mark can absolutely reign supreme against only 20 millimeter AA and a couple of Yak 9s. But in C phase, we will see most likely 37 millimeter AA and possibly P51 fighters. <coughs> So they won't have as much of an easy time when it comes to that. Meanwhile, 155mm starting to kill off the artillery of UU as well. So the artillery fights starting to swing into favor of our player in blue as well. As the counter battery does work. Artillery of UU trying to snipe the Vakotina in the north. But that's not an easy task. As obviously the Vekotin is um, <clears throat> pretty far away and they're getting pretty inaccurate when firing up there, especially if also stressed out at the same time. And the flag has been captured here by Homer, allowing for a 12 12. UU in a slight advantage in point wise, but still 30 minutes to play, so that shouldn't be the deciding factor here, most likely. Another off map though. Being called in up here in the north, Krupa Storm over coming in. It's a bit more AA, but still 20 millimeter. But we are only 30 seconds away now from C phase, where there is a cut of 37 millimeter waiting for UU, and that might lock down the air once more for Homer until maybe artillery can open it again. So we'll see how that goes. And it's the first off map call of this one here comes in in the north, or is it the same that we saw earlier in the south? Alright, it is actually the same off map, just rotated north. Okay, that's the 52p. He is helping out with the long run. 52p is usually nowadays not that amazing anymore, but in this game where the enemy doesn't have any infantry support guns, its 1500 meter range are outranging Maxims, are outranging uh, sniper rifles, so 
it's actually quite helpful here. Dealing with units like the Sissy. As the 20mm just desperately try to defend it against the JU-88. And the Yak-9 scrambling for the defense as well. Bekotin though, on fire mode. But JU-88 turning the wrong way. And gets shut down before the Yak-9 gets pushed away by the Bekotins. So, pretty big loss there for Homer. Gets the 52p, but losing a JU-88 is something you can't afford in this matchup. Whilst Peach is still on the 1410, the South still going pretty well for our red player here. And the artillery and air of Homer has a lot of work cut out for them. Still trying to counter better reading here. But the howitzers are falling back. Plan Hames will get their bombs off. Two 20mm as we see, have seen before. Not good enough to stop this, but the Yak-9 once more coming in. And that lines up perfectly. Bekotin's not around to stop it. First Planheim already under heavy fire. Yak-9 overshooting it slightly though. But the 20mm with the help of the Yak-9 damage might be still good enough. Oh no, it's splitting fire now. So the Planheim actually will get out. Second one now should fall back though. There's no Bekotin down here in the south anymore. Oh no, there's one in the far south. But it's still, there's no reason for it to stay around here. Taking even more 20mm damage for... And now the Yak-9 coming in. So this Planheim is down. The 20mm should be good enough now to get the job done. Bekotin will open fire on the Yak-9. But every bomber lost right now is massive. Helping out our red player quite a lot. So these Planheim losses, that was unnecessary. And yeah, we'll lose. Uh, is a big loss here for Homer. Who will now not have as much bombing power. Not much as much... Uh, strength for an overwhelming airstrike either like the way of how you break late game air defenses often is just sending such a swarm of bombers in that you can overwhelm them and some get through to bomb down the enemy AA and then next time the enemy has even less AA to defend against it and so on but if you're losing bombers like this then you might never reach that threshold where you can just run over it and not minding them at all so Every loss, like the JOD8 in the north, or the Planheim just now in the south, is pretty big. And while it's more Ojnazis coming in. No 37mm called in so far by uh, Yuyu. 1311 still up though, as the flag on the other side of the river is still under control of our Chinese player. Sniper Perry will try to get around to hit here. Or could come around to kill the sissy. Sissy smoking off and retreating though now. As there is full control for Yuyu in the north again. All the infantry of Homer has been pushed back to the other side. And they can't really come easily over here once more. Smoke or so would be needed. And even then, Oshnazis versus Yakaris is a pretty fair trade for the Oshnazis. If they can get some long range shots off first, they will win there. Especially if they can get some extra veterancy. So, yeah, Kaveri push in the south. The Nazis will get overwhelmed here. And more of them sitting around here. Partizanis coming in in good numbers. It seems like there will be a try to push for this once more. And the Browning is not a great MG, but Ratsuveki only having the Lati as well, so. You actually get more MG fire on the side of AK than you get on the side of Rhyma Rapana. Something that you usually don't have the advantage in with AK is the mid and long range firepower of infantry. And in this fight in the matchup, you absolutely do. Lati here though, killing off two Partizanis in transport already, which is pretty massive. Three of them going down, all three down. Good kills there for Homer. Still down 10 14 now though. As the push in the center not really working out. More 52 piece coming around. And 152 millimeter scrambling to the south. And a good off map here can do insanely well, most likely as well. So the position here, for sure, pretty strong for a red player when it comes to that. But artillery wise, the advantage is on the side of our blue player. And we still have only reached the half point mark here when it comes to the time limit. So these 155mm still can for sure do a lot of harm 
and might be able to turn the tide of battle after all. Hence the advantage that UU has point-wise is not too, too massive yet. So if Homer can stabilize to a 12-12 and then maybe push in the last 10 minutes after having wiped out a lot of forces with the artillery, that still might be enough here. But for that, first some territory needs to be reclaimed. The 12-12 first needs to be re-established. Otherwise, the period where you need to push come, uh, is earlier and earlier for every time, the, every second the enemy takes you down. And the artillery really will still need some time to fully kick in here. Trying to p kill off infantry down here. Trying to kill the Ocean Nazis over here. They are slowly moving forward. Not really successful in the engagement over here. Off map. Being called in for the south. This engagement not going well for Homer, but 12 12 for now re established. If the Red Sovaki reinforcements can arrive in time, it might be good enough. Ah, but not if you get sniped by the Hetzer in your transport. Ooh, this is pretty rough. Two of them down. Oh no, this is this is a, quite a catastrophe here. T-34 around as well. No anti-tank really to interfere with them. A couple of R-15 biplane anti-tank rockets are scrambled now. But the 20mm on the other side are firing. Schwatt goes down though. Can they get all out alive? Yak-9 coming in. Will kill one of them for sure. Ju-88 around as well. That one might get out though. Get some nice hits. Schwatt kill really important. But still a 1410 once more for our player in red. UU up to the 1410. L230 uh, uh, under fire by the Vecotines might actually be shut down here. Or the Yak 9. Yak 9 under heavy fire as well. Both actually might fall. No, Vecotine has to reload. That might save the Yak 9 here. Salvo coming in on the long range again. Nope, Yak 9 still goes down. But we have a P51 card now confirmed in C phase. And that will allow a bit more air defense here. P-51s, though, have one big issue. At least this one has six Brownings, but the issue is that they're actually too fast. They often overshoot, and um, they also need a lot of space to turn around, often flying deep into enemy territory before they made their turn due to the high speed. And as you can see, that can end deadly. P-51, they're going down, as we have arrived in sea phase, where both sides have a lot of income, so... Unlike the normal matchup of Maverick versus Maverick, where both sides at this stage scramble for points, we arrive in C phase with both sides having their maximum amount of points of income and still being able to reinforce the frontline heavily. Like, for example, that Mustang that we just saw was less than a minute of income here for you at this point, V4 victory. And the Planheim running over the 20mm here. 20mm now firing onto the Doe though instead of trying to kill off the Planheim. So the Planheim will escape. But the 37mm are out now and that should lock down the south completely unless the mortars are, uh, the artillery pieces here are able to kill off the enemy AA. Though it seems like they're not firing, const uh, firing constantly and that's a big issue in my eyes. Like these guns should be constantly firing here for Homer. If you invest that heavily into artillery, your artillery also should never be silent. As this is kind of the wind condition of our blue player. Like the combination of air and artillery spam is the big advantage. Infantry wise, you have some advantages. Tank wise, you are far behind even AK. Something that AK usually isn't ahead in, but in this matchup, it absolutely is. As the only T26 card is on the other side. So, you have to use that advantage in artillery to good effect, otherwise it might not end too great. And they're all silent here, I don't know why. Supply truck absolutely should be affordable here, and this one is not even out of shells, neither is this one in the north. So they shouldn't be silent. With time limit, you should have enough supply for the 50 minutes in your deck, so running out of supplies shouldn't be the biggest worry here either. In a balanced deck, I kind of would expect the sea face card of supplies. So, surprised to see them silent here right now. As they really should try to kill off the enemy AA. All of the 20mm is actually out of ammo. 
Uh, but the 37 millimeters now arrive at the front line and the plan him will not make its bombing run here most likely. Ooh, actually gets the bomb out. But so the second 37 millimeter is now out as well. And this time the plan him might be overwhelmed by the air defense. Already trailing black smoke. Yak9 trying to come in. It's really close here. Plan him actually making it out. Yak9 still scrambling for it though. As the IL-2 is what takes the fire of the Valkyrie team now. And oh my god. Planheim getting into warp speed at the last second. Yak9 not able to get the kill. Valkyrie team might be able to get the kill onto the Yak9 though. Has to reload but the Yak9 is still in its space for a while. And that should be a kill here on the Yak9. Yak9 not a sturdy plane at all. Goes down in a fireball. A really wild game down here on the ground. 13-11 though still for our player in red. Uh, with 20 minutes remaining, but now with this tick going on for a long while now, thanks to the advantage over here, um, Homer really has to get a push through in the late game, as the advantage that Yu has by now is quite massive. IL-2 with rockets coming in for the 75mm over here. Becker team pushing it back once more, though. And the 40mm Bofors has arrived as well. So we... Trying to kill the Vekadeen. Hillary on the other side. Now firing out of all three big guns. Supply finally has arrived. Trying to counter battery. Uh, as the 52mm goes down as well. Not even 100% sure counter battery is the most useful purpose of these guns at the moment. As first of all the enemy gun doesn't really do much damage. And you only have so much time left. that uh, And so many rounds left to fire before the time runs out. So... Maybe other targets would be more worthwhile, like trying to break these forests in the south. Uh, trying to kill off the AA so your air spam can really get effective in again. Trying to pin, uh, kill off the infantry that holds the front line over here, getting it back to a 12-12. Like that, for example, should have been the purpose of this 155mm for the last couple of minutes. Infantry can't really push in here, the 52 piece can hold it back. But 155mm artillery shells can kill off the enemy that... Uh, unit that holds the, the front line forward here and then you will get to a 12-12 back relatively quickly um, the enemy AA uh, artillery does die here but 1410 still continues and I'm starting to worry about Homer's capability of pushing back over the river and getting a flag advantage over UU for long enough here to get this game back under control AA under fire in the north that is nice 37 meter under fire here might get killed off. Planheim is running for it, but two, another 37 meter has been brought around, so breaking this with air spam, relatively unlikely as well. Um, if you wanted to have really air spammed, you should have done it in the first 20 minutes, when the 37 millimeters weren't an option, as the sea phase card of these brings out quite a couple. And as I said, the P51s are a relatively capable fighter as well, as they chase down the Planheim here. So next airplane down. Uh, P-51 under heavy fire by the Vecca team now with one star veterancy. So still might go down here, but that doesn't really matter as long as the Planheims get killed off and they don't allow Homer to push through. Heavy JU-88 push, and that's what I'm talking about. If you add one more JU-88 and two more Planheims, even this amount of AA might be, get overwhelmed, might get even bumped to bits. Um, this way, the bombs still get through, but the AA will stay around. AA will deal damage to the bombers. Bombers will take longer to reload, and so on and so on. So, the critical mass of airplanes hasn't been achieved this game by Homer. And the artillery is not doing well enough at killing it off. Um, not quite sure what it's aiming for in the north right now. Yes, they're all aiming for the th same thing, it seems like. Yeah. Which is also not how you want to use these big, kind of big of guns. Because the enemy then only has to dodge them at one point. Which is easy enough done. Uh, and also you have a big chance of, even if you hit the target, just overkilling the target. And wasting a lot of shots. Usually you want to group them in groups of twos. Or even individual guns at this stage. And spread out the fire. Then the enemy has to do a lot more work of dodging all over the screens. Um, and... Might not dodge everywhere, and also the chance of 
overkilling is not as high. Usually two guns are enough to uh, really allow for a kill in the first place. Especially if you have radio. Currently radio is lacking at the front line though. But the 1311 is still on. And another J88 might be here for to die now. As, yeah, still uh, has a long way home and there's a lot of AA over here. P51 should go down on the other side as well, but that doesn't really matter. If you kill the bombers here, you're absolutely fine as you, you. Because you have the front line, you have the 1311, you have the point advantage, you don't need to push deeper. It's all down to Homer now to push and win. And that's not happening right now. Are we now trying to kill off units down here in the south? Mm. But there's nothing to follow it up with. The traits on the front line lately have not been good enough. As you, you had more front line units because of less investment into air, less investment into artillery. So was able to leverage that into an advantage because the artillery didn't change it either. Didn't change the equation on the front line much. And now the advantage here is just so big that, to be honest, I don't think there's a way back down. Like the 1410 is really strong. And... Homer surrenders as well. Yeah, GGVP. Yu Yu taking it 2 to 0 over Homer in this series. Well played here. Bye. So, yeah, really well played by Yu Yu in this game versus Homer. And, yeah, 400 points ahead. Well done. <laughs> As this is it with league for today um yeah 2-0 for you getting an advantage in a pretty tough group as well as fire drum and uh, green hd no pushovers so homer has to step it up if homer wants to make it into the playoffs and Yu is a good step closer to them with this victory. So let's see how this goes. And we're now gonna go on with the next match. Which is not a match in the league though. But a fewer submitted match from our little Ulf in the chat. Which I wanna have a look now on now. 